हेलो ड्यू टू द कॉन्स्टेंटली इंक्रीजिंग पोल्यूशन लेवल ऑन अर्थ एंड ड्यू टू ऑल काइंड ऑफ नेचुरल कैलामिटीज विच हिटर्स अर्थ माइट नॉट इवन बी हैबिटेबल आफ्टर ए फ्यू इयर्स एंड हेंस साइंटिस्ट एज वेल एज बिजनेस मैन हैव बीन सर्चिंग फॉर अ न्यू हैबिटेबल प्लेनेट बट before we send humans to such a planet we have to ensure that the planet is actually habitable and hence to do just that we send satellites but let us say we send a particular satellite from earth we launch a particular satellite from earth how are you so sure that it is going to land on the planet in this video i am going to answer just that how can you ensure that if you launch a particular satellite from earth from a particular height that it will surely hit the planet now for a planet to be habitable it should have water and oxygen and hence it will be as blue as earth is so let me draw a blue planet this is the new habitable planet that we are trying to reach let us say the distance of earth from this uh, habitable planet is r now here the planet appears to be like a disk because you are looking at your screen and so does in a telescope if you have ever observed a planet from the telescope you will see that the planet observed looks like a disk what we want to find is from what distance from what maximum distance uh, if i launch my satellite will it surely hit the planet let me call that distance p prime now if the planet has some radius the planet it let us say it has some radius capital r then the area of this disk that you will observe in your telescope will be pi into r square now if uh, gravity does not exist then all you want is to hit this area right this particular area that you can see through your telescope you just want to hit that but since uh, gravity exists we can launch this uh, satellite such that when it reaches close to the planet it may not even touch the surface it might be at a particular distance uh, from the surface of the planet and uh, since gravity is going to attract the satellite to the surface of the planet it will end up landing on the planet so gravity is actually our friend in this case and hence the area that we are trying to hit is not this which we shall call the geometric area ag so we are not actually trying to hit the geometric area but we are actually trying to hit something known as the effective area ae and this is exactly what we are trying to find in today's video what is the area around the planet which if we try to hit from earth the satellite is surely going to land on the surface of the planet now in this case of we are obviously neglecting the effects of gravity due to sun as well as some other giant planets such as jupiter because otherwise the problem will become extremely difficult but this problem is going to make the basic idea clear and uh, we are going to leave the general case which is when you include gravity of other planets and sun to scientists in nasa now what we are assuming here is that earth is obviously present at a very very greater distance compared to the radius of the planet right the planet is certainly not so close that uh, the distance between earth and the planet is less than the radius of the planet itself so small r is very much greater than capital r now this distance b prime from where we launch our satellite or the height b prime from which we launch the satellite because here i have considered the surface of the earth so the height b prime from where we launch the satellite is known as the impact parameter and in fact b prime is the maximum value of impact parameter that is if i launch a satellite from anywhere beyond b prime then it is not going to hit the planet right it is going to travel like this and then it is going to get attracted towards the planet but it will miss it it is going to miss it but if you send the satellite from anywhere 
less than b prime right from any height less than b prime then the satellite will surely hit the planet but now i'm saying hit but actually what i mean is land because the satellites they will have parachutes so it's not that it is going to hit the planet and the satellite is going to get destroyed but actually what i mean by hit is it is going to land on the planet and it has this effective area as you might have guessed will be nothing else but pi into b prime square and hence the problem of finding effective area finally reduces to a problem of finding what is a b prime squared to find a b prime what we are going to do is we are going to conserve angular momentum and energy now linear momentum is obviously not conserved because the direction of its momentum obviously changing as you can see from the figure but what we can find is angular momentum and we can conserve it because angular momentum will be conserved in this process since uh, it is a central force which is a conservative force here which is gravity so if we launch a satellite from b prime like this then it will surely fall into the planet it will surely land on the surface of the planet let us conserve energy first the initial energy of that uh, body is uh, half mv square right if i assume that i have launched the satellite with a velocity v then the energy will be half mv squared minus the gravitational potential energy of the planet which is m into capital m where capital m is nothing but the mass of this planet right this planet has a mass of capital m so small m into capital m and small m is obviously the mass of the satellite so if we are launching a satellite let's say from over here and let us say the mass of that satellite is small m then this will be the energy the kinetic energy of the satellite and the gravitational potential energy will be small m into capital m into the universal gravitational constant divided by r this will be its initial mechanical energy now as i've told you small r is very very greater than capital r and hence over here r tends to infinity that is we are uh, launching the satellite from very 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 far distances and hence the total mechanical energy reduces to half mv squared because when r tends to infinity this term the potential energy term will become zero and what will be its mechanical energy finally when it reaches the close to the surface of the planet when we are successful at hitting the planet and what is going to be its final mechanical energy what will be its mechanical energy when we are successful at hitting the surface of the planet when we have successfully landed the satellite at that point its a final energy or final mechanical energy is going to be equal to half m and let us say while it is going to hit the surface of the planet its velocity is v of r right its velocity when it is at a distance of r from the center of the planet capital r which is the radius of the planet squared minus the gravitational potential energy which is mmg divided by r when it is over here like right? when it is close to the surface of the planet okay so now we have conserved energy now let us uh, try to conserve angular momentum or let us try to find the angular momentum where initially and finally let me call this ei and this as ef otherwise it will be very confusing which one is initial and which one is final energy so initially the angular momentum would be equal to m into r into v that is the formula for uh, the angular momentum so it is going to be m into what is r r is nothing but b prime which is our impact parameter into let us say initially its uh, velocity was v not right here also let's call it v not because the final velocity we have called it v so we cannot call the initial velocity also as v so let us call it v not so the initial angular momentum is going to be m v prime into v not what will be the final angular momentum the final angular momentum is going to be again m into r because now its distance from the center of the planet is r into v of 
are now here we are trying to find the angular momentum from the center of the planet that is we are trying to find the angular momentum of the satellite about the center of the planet which i have marked here as o hmm since the uh, angular momentum has to be conserved we are going to get from these two equations from equation number let us call it 3 and equation number 4 let us call this equation number 2 and let us call this equation number 1 so from equation number 3 and 4 we can see that b prime into v not will be equal to r into v of r and hence what we have found is v of r v of r is going to be equal to b prime v not upon r we know b prime we know what v not is and we know what r is and hence we have found v of r what do we get if we conserve energy if we conserve energy we get half m v not square is equal to half m v of r the whole square minus m capital m g divided by capital r and what we can do now is that we can substitute this v of r over here if we do that we get half m v not square is equal to half m b prime v not divided by r the whole square minus small m capital m g divided by r remember what we wanted to find we wanted to find where is it yes uh, we wanted to find a b prime squared so here we are shall solve for b prime squared what do we get we get half m b prime squared v not squared divided by r squared minus small m capital m g divided by r so i will get half m b prime squared v not squared upon r squared is equal to let me take this term on the other side of the equation we get half m v not square plus small m capital m g divided by capital r so b prime squared would be equal to capital r squared upon v not square into 2 by m m by 2 v not square plus small m capital m g divided by r now we multiply this term inside not the r square but the rest of the terms which is v not square and 2 divided by m we if we multiply it inside this term will obviously cancel with uh, this m by 2 v not square over here because they are just reciprocals of each other so we get r square outside and we get a 1 plus i have multiplied 2 by m v not square into m capital m g divided by r so i get a r square and uh, this small m and small m gets cancelled so i have 1 plus 2 capital m g divided by v not square into r actually let us not cancel the small m and you will soon see why so if i just uh, maintain the small m over here right if i don't cancel them out then okay, i can write this uh, equation as R squared one plus m capital M G divided by R. Okay, let us skip this step and uh, continue from this step itself, and you will soon see why. So I already had a small m capital M G divided by capital R, and I had divided by m v not square divided by two. So what can I write this as? I can write this as one plus u of r, which is the gravitational potential energy. This is nothing but the gravitational potential energy divided by the initial energy. Remember what our initial energy was? Our initial energy was half m v not square. So let us call it E because the initial energy is equal to the final energy. So I could have called both E, but to avoid confusion. i had called one as ei and another as ef which stands for initial energy and final energy but since both are equal i can just call them e and hence we have found b prime squared if we have found b prime squared we can just find pi into b prime squared which is equal to pi into r squared 1 plus u of r divided by p now what was pi into r squared pi into r squared was the geometrical area pi into r squared was geometrical area ag hence the effective area 
is equal to the geometrical area multiplied by 1 plus u of r divided by e. And hence, we have found the effective area in terms of the geometrical area as well as the potential energy due to the planet and the initial energy of the satellite. And this is exactly we wanted to find because we already know what the geometrical area is and we also know what the potential energy due to the planet is. We also know with what energy we have lost the satellite and hence we can find the effective area. Now, how can you verify whether what we have derived is correct or not? Here you can see that if the gravitational potential energy is zero, right? If u of r is equal to zero, then this implies that the effective area is equal to geometric area. This is something which I have told you in the beginning of the video that if gravity is not present, then we only have to care about the geometric area. But since gravity is present, you can see that the effective area is actually greater than the geometric area. And hence, even if we launch the satellite from uh, impact parameter, which gives uh, effective area greater than the geometric area, then still we successfully can land the satellite on the surface of the planet. Now here, gravity has helped us, but I'm going to give you a homework problem. In Rutherford's scattering experiment, what he does is, if this is the gold nucleus, then he scatters alpha particles. So if there are some alpha particles, which is a helium nucleus, he shoots alpha particles at the gold nucleus and which scatters from the gold nucleus. This is completely opposite process of what we have discussed in this video. And what you have to find is that the effective area for this potential that is uh, for the case of alpha particles scattering from gold nucleus, the effective area is actually going to be less than the geometric area. That is, in our case, we found that AE is greater than AG. The effective area is greater than the geometric area because this is the extra term. But in Rutherford scattering case, you have to prove as the homework that the effective area is actually less than the geometric area. So that is something that I'm going to leave for you to do as a homework. You have to prove this. For homework. So this is the case for Rutherford scattering. So that was all about this video. If you have enjoyed this video, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Do like and share my video. And if you have any queries, then leave them in the comments. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.